rid of the body? Hi, one of the party? You better come along. It's, it's gonna, gonna be, be fun. fun. Sorry, hurry. This party is a good hurry. It's difficult to believe, but until 1900, very few Americans danced in public. When they did, it was mainly at weddings and other social events, tripping the light not so fantastic while waltz and polka music played. Everybody's doing it, doing it, doing it. Everybody's doing it, doing it, doing it. See that, that all began to change around 1910, when ragtime music took the country by storm. On New York City's Lower East Side, by all accounts a very poor immigrant neighborhood, an awkward, shy teenage boy caught the dancing bug. The problem was, he had no idea what to do when music was playing, and he held a pretty young lady in his arms. Murray Teichman thought he might be an architect, but initially he supported himself as an errand boy. Inspired by an embarrassing evening at a local dance party, Murray made the life-changing decision to take dance lessons. The lanky teenager caught on quickly, and by 1912, he was teaching at a huge New York exhibition hall called the Grand Central Palace. One thing led to another. The young Teichman Americanized his name to Arthur Murray, and the rest, as they say, is history. And one and two, and two and one, Oh, shucks, I can't dance. Arthur Murray taught me dancing in a hurry. I had a week to spare. He showed me the groundwork, the walking around work, and told me to take it from there. Well, Arthur was a, an unusual man. He was willing to, his, to expose his inner self, which famous or hardworking people or proud people find hard to do. He worked on like, I was an ugly duckling, and look what happened to me. Or how I became popular overnight. This kind of appeal that he started with his company with drew thousands and thousands of responses right from opening day. Circumstances and Arthur's willingness to say, look what I've gained, had a lot to do with bringing people to him. He was successful, the proof is in the pudding. Look at all the studios he, under the name of Arthur Murray. He started it with the shoe print, little footprints that he sent by mail. He w went to Georgia, he went to architectural school. He was at the time where the horse and carriage type clientele came to the studio. How many floors did they have? They had three ballrooms, huge, two floors. How many teachers do you think we had? Nine, zero, 90 teachers in one school that I worked in. And they had nine or 10 supervisors, about nine or 10 people in each group. So that was huge. That doesn't exist anymore, but that's what it was like in his day. Arthur Murray taught me dancing in a hurry. You're invited to the Arthur Murray party. Yes, your local Arthur Murray studio, which holds those wonderful studio parties in your community, joins now with the 230 other Arthur Murray studios from coast to coast to invite you to the Arthur Murray television party for its students. More than half a century before Dancing with the Stars, television viewers were captivated by the Arthur Murray party. The party's first broadcast, which Arthur Murray paid for himself, was more infomercial than entertainment.
can save a full 50% on the cost of your lessons by taking advantage of Arthur Murray's special two-for-one rates. Any two people can now learn to dance for the price of one. And you'll find that you can actually go dancing the famous Arthur Murray way after your very first lesson. Yes, even if you've never danced before. You can actually go dancing after only one lesson with Arthur Murray's famous magic method. Learning is so very easy and the cost so little. Yes, it takes less time at Arthur Murray's, and two can learn for the price of one, so don't put it off any longer. Decide now to take your first step to popularity, the Arthur Murray way. Music for the Arthur Murray Show was under the direction of Abel Coleman. And don't forget, folks, to mail that postcard naming the mystery dance before midnight tomorrow night. And if you have the right answer, you'll win two free dance lessons at any Arthur Murray studio. Previous winners are not eligible to compete again. Along with promoting his studios and the benefits of dance, the Arthur Murray Party introduced television viewers to his lovely and talented wife, Catherine. And here to greet you right now is your hostess, Arthur Murray's favorite dancing partner, Catherine Murray! and welcome to the Arthur Murray party. We're so glad you could come and we hope you'll have a good time with us. You know, this is television to you, but to us, it's a party just like the parties that the Arthur Murray Studios have for their pupils and their teachers. Married in the spring of 1925, the Murrays became partners in every sense of the word. In 1926, the couple welcomed twin girls, Jane and Phyllis. Like their parents, the twins have lived long and very productive lives. In 2010, Jane Mary Heimlich's memories of growing up in the shadow of celebrity were published in a memoir entitled, Out of Step. They were such amazing people. I think I'd like people just to know their story. Their life sounded glamorous. They were very hardworking people. I think we need to know that things don't just come easily, that you have to work, and they really personified what goes into the person who makes a mark. It's hard work, perseverance, and often sacrificing part of your life. Mother was a natural performer. Hello? Hello? Emma Lou? But like I think so many actresses, and I've interviewed a great many, I think she was awfully critical of herself. Always felt she had, I believe, to really try a little harder. When Francis dances with me, Halichi. She was really the opposite as far as my father would go. If daddy bruised egos, mother was always making people feel good. If I had sat down with him as I would interview as you're talking to me and asked, daddy, what was it like growing up in the slums? You know what he would have said? He would have said, why are you asking this? Don't bother me unless you've got a publisher. <laughs> or he might have said, who's going to be interested? That was long ago. He was a pragmatist. I don't think he would have wanted to spend a great deal of time talking about his childhood. We were really never close. But you know, those were the days when people didn't hug. We kind of pecked each other on the cheek, sang hello, sang goodbye. It wasn't a huggy time. It was really more life with father. That's an old play in which the father is a kind of Victorian character. We respected our father. I don't think I felt close to him as I feel much closer to him writing about him and learning more about him. What I really want is for my memoirs to speak to other people, men, women, who have, like mine, very achieving, successful, and perfectionist parents. 
You know, it's a bit difficult to be offspring of such achieving people that, gosh, I can never do what they have done. But we each have our own path to follow. And you just have to, I think, find your own passion and honor it and not try to be a carbon copy of parents. To me, they seemed the opposite. He was serious, dedicated, and when he got in public, he played a very precise, proper role. She, when she got in public, went totally charismatic. She responded to the other people. She would be the life of the party. She would be up, happy, encouraging people to do things, starting stuff, total opposite. She was Miss Personality, absolutely bubbly and everything, and dancing and loved it. And he was a businessman. He had a brilliant brain. And he was a very good businessman. And he one day, jokingly, said to me, if you had a Yiddish kopf, means a Jewish head, instead of a Gentile head, you'd be much better off. Because I never saved money and he knew it. And so he would say to me, that's what's wrong with you. You don't have a Jewish head. So many people believe that there isn't an Arthur Murray. One of our teenage pupils said to his teacher, is Arthur Murray still alive? He taught my grandmother. But tonight you're going to see for yourself on his first television appearance that there really is an Arthur Murray. And the other question that people want to know will also be answered for you. And that is, can Arthur Murray dance? Because he's going to do a new and advanced form of rumba that's called mambo. Ladies and gentlemen, Arthur Murray. You're paying bills now. You've always done it in the past. Oh, well, maybe you used to be better. <laughs> nice. Do you really think that husbands and wives should dance together? Well, if the wife is like you, dear. Oh, gee, now I'm getting my chin chucked. This is wonderful. How would, how would you like to waltz with me? Huh? Oh, well, don't you want to? I mean, it'd be much cheaper than buying me a mink coat. <laughs> well, I'd like to... I finally uh, caught uh, you without an answer. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'd like to waltz with you, but I'd much rather do the sambo or the jitterbug. Why, well, just to show we can do it? I like the waltz. It's more romantic. How about it? <laughs> his 10-year run, the Arthur Murray Party aired on all four networks, ABC, CBS, NBC, and Dumont, and introduced hundreds of budding celebrities to television audiences across the country. Oh, it was, it was extremely popular, and it started so many famous people. A terrific amount of people who became famous later, later started on his, his program. I think Johnny Carson was, Merv Griffin, they, and, and Merv Griffin, uh, stayed friends with him for life. I, I can't name them all, but there are a bunch of them. Start on this program. In Arthur Murray Dance Party, there were a lot of celebrities. Uh, sometimes on the, they were up and comers at the time, but they were involved in dancing and doing exhibitions with Arthur Murray teachers and others on the show. It 
took it into the homes of every, every American person who had television at the time. And at that time, dancing was still a really big recreational avocation for people because, you know, TV was still in its infancy, dancing together was very popular, and so he even further popularized it with that, with that particular show. Oh, how we dance on the night we were wed, we vowed our true love, the word wasn't said. a personality and he was a brain. If you put the two of them in a pot, that would be one heck of a show person. There once was a poor young girl who left her country home. She was going to the city to seek employment. During this program, we're going to feature more dancing, singing, and comedy from the extensive video archives of the Arthur Murray Party. Yeah. Will you walk our guest of honor over to his table? I'd love to. Uh, walking's very simple, Zachary. Now, just, uh... <laughs> Here's how you do it. Just follow me now. One, two, three, four. I watched the Arthur Murray show last night, and I guess the name of the mystery dance is the Walla Walla Wiggle. It's worth noting that most of these performances have not been seen on television since they were originally broadcast. We'll also tell you more about the lives of Arthur, Catherine, and their twin daughters, Jane and Phyllis. Up next, legendary broadcast journalist Edward R. Murrow interviews Arthur and Catherine Murray on New Year's Eve, 1955. Arthur Murray, who is 60 years old, has taught many millions to dance not only in person, but by mail, books, and television. It was television that made Arthur's wife, Catherine Murray, such a well-known personality. 